Hello and welcome to the Go Development Studio RSS feed demonstration. The purpose of this demonstration is to show how easy it is to build functional apps within Development Studio. This demonstration is going to take approximately five minutes and when it's finished it will run across all major mobile platforms. So let's get started. First step, go into the project settings. I'm going to assign an icon to our app. In this example, I'm using one of the pre-built icons that comes as part of Go Development Studio. You could easily import your own PNG file and let Development Studio take care of the sizing so that it runs across all platforms. So there's the app that will be displayed within the container when it runs, and then there's the title. We'll leave that as it is. So the icon plus the title of what you'll see within the container when it starts up. Let's define the back-end data connectivity right mouse click, add data method starts the data creation wizard. Let's call it RSS feed. Click on the connection string. Let's tell it what type of connection it's going to be. Look, we have a selection here of different types of connectivities, so SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL and so on. Um, SOAP and REST web services. In this example, RSS feed. Come and paste the URL to my uh, RSS feed in there and I'm going to accept the defaults for the remainder of the wizard. Now we define the back-end connectivity let's define what's being displayed on the screen in a list. To show information in a list format we use a repeater component. If I click on the triangle up here I can set the properties. There are two key properties data source and the row template. Data source defines where the data is coming from so it by makes a connection between the, the component and the back-end uh, data system. So I've defined that. Now I need to define how we're going to show this information on the screen, what format it's going to take. To do that we use templates. You can define your own templates um, using the new template feature. I've just got a simple three row template. At the top I'm going to bind the title. Middle I'm going to bind the description and bottom find the link. I can even change the, the font and layout. Um, so regular, I'm going to make that bold and I'm also going to make the font size large for the title and for the link I'm going to change the color to lawn green. Okay. Uh, one final thing we need to do within the row template is define a response to touch on the screen. We can define a, a response to a tap on the screen or a swipe using either of these two properties. I'm going to use tap. I'm going to add an action. So I'm going to carry out an action in response to a tap on the screen. I'm going to open a web page. Open web page takes a single parameter. That's the URL of the web page that you want to open. I'm going to bind that to the link. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go and change the properties for the page. So RSS feed is the title. And then I'm going to compile and deploy my Go app to my Go Enterprise server. Successful. So let's display the emulator. This is the Windows Phone emulator and you can see we've got the client running and within that we've got an eye indicating that an update has been deployed and then click that and we can see there's the icon we defined, there's the title, let's select it, there's the heading RSS feed that we defined in the text property and then that's the RSS feed displayed as a list broken down into three rows so we've got the title, description and then link. Let's click on this link and there you have link through to the web page. And that concludes our demonstration. In under five minutes, we've built a Go app that runs successfully across all major mobile platforms, connects into a back-end data system, and responds to user touch. 